Okay, there you go. John, thank you so much for letting me interview you. My pleasure. It's great to be here in Amsterdam. Yes. This is uh, John Farrell, and he has written a book on John Nixon, and it is just Richard about, Nixon. Ri sorry, <laughs> Richard Nixon, and it has just been uh, released uh, now in Amsterdam. Yep. And please tell us about it. I, I was listening to your interview on uh, on YouTube for uh, Pros and, and uh, Politics, and I enjoyed listening to it. You were talking about your writing process. Yeah, I think that. Um, this is something that I came to the book thinking that I was going to be much more critical of Nixon. And I found that for all his flaws and all his sins, that there was a human being there. Yes. And as a biographer, yes. that's your job, is to humanize the person, not just present him as a caricature. Yes. So yes. that was my goal. Great. And you were aiming uh, to sell your book for the Generation X and Millenniums in particular. Yeah. yeah. In part and why did you aim yeah. for this market? In part, it's by necessity, because believe it or not, two-thirds of the American uh, book-buying public um, either came to America or were born since Nixon resigned. And so the new generations, the millennials and the Xers, they only know Nixon uh, as a caricature from television, uh, the bad guy president who shows up in the movies. And I thought that they uh, deserved more. I wanted to write a book for my kids and their, yes. and their and colleagues. They, and, yeah. and if I had one wish, it's that I would start seeing it in millennial backpacks. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us about your writing, because uh, do, you, do you have a particular style? Or this is my, uh, my third book. Yeah. Uh, I have another one that I've just begun working on. Uh, I wrote a book about Tip O'Neill, who was a famous House speaker when Ronald Reagan was president. Yeah. He was sort of... Uh, Reagan's chief opponent. Yes. Uh, I wrote a book about a great American defense attorney, Clarence Darrow, yes. uh, and now uh, Richard Nixon. Um, I'm not the, I'm not Hemingway, no. uh, or Fitzgerald, uh, or Faulkner. Um, I tend to be sort of a plotter. I do lots of lots of research, and uh, if the book uh, reads well, and uh, as this one. At least the reviewers have said the, it's the because reviews have been fantastic. it's because I rewrite and I rewrite and I rewrite to so get it smoother and, and better. And and, and I'm, I'm proudest of this book. This is the best. This, this is, is the best one. Yeah, definitely. Yes, yes, because the reviews, as I just said, were absolutely fantastic. Yeah, they were raging. Yeah, yeah. They were raging. And we even showed up on the New York Times bestseller list. Wow. Was, made my publisher very happy. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Definitely. And do you have uh, some advice for our readers? Is there anything that you. Readers or writers? Readers, uh, readers and writers. Writers. Um, for the writers, I would just say follow your dream. Don't think that it's. That it's, it's beyond you. That it's, that it's beyond you. I used to go, when I was about 30 years old, I used to go into bookstores. And I used to pick up these magical things that other writers had somehow persevered, gotten the idea and the vision and seen through, thinking that I would never do it. And now and after, after, I'm midway through my fourth book now, and I can say it's just uh, it's one sentence after another, and, and, uh, and you can do it. Um, for readers, I just, you know, I just love readers. They're, they're, um, they're people who in a very um, fast food, Twitter, um, social media kind of world still maintain a, a, a grip on, on science and depth and history and, and truth. And, I, and I, I don't want to sound too corny, but I really think that, there, that this is hope for the future, that there will still be human beings who, who want to see things uh, in depth and with complexity, and not just uh, snark and uh, um, and uh, uh, quit dismissal on, on Twitter or even um, a longer Facebook uh, post. But but readers of, of literature are, have and always will be very important for the human condition. I think so too. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. Yeah, you're doing a great service. <laughs> <laughs> and I have one last question sure, for you. Yeah. And it's um, I know everyone's been talking about this evening at. Uh, about Trump, and mm -hmm. I know that there, well, there is a comparison, but it's a mild comparison. But what advice would you give? Would, what advice do you think that Nixon would give to Trump? Oh, stop the tweeting, um, <laughs> fire, exactly. fire your staff, and listen to what they say. Get it, get better people in around you. That's what uh, yeah. you said at the uh, bookshop in April. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely, def definitely get better people around you, and um, and, stop and, and listen to what they say. Because I think that that he's been a tycoon, a business tycoon. I mean, but you're yeah. a business tycoon. You're at the top, it's your money, mostly, that you're making these decisions with, and everybody else works for you, and he's been something of a tyrannical tycoon, you know, this is the man who on television fires people, um, and he doesn't understand um, uh, that uh, staffs that have 
uh, a history and experience in working with government and politics can present him with um, uh, bright ideas about how to get his program through or, or what kind of uh, things that he needs to do. He, he tends to be that same impetuous tycoon type. Fortunately for us, fortunately for the world, the place where he does listen to people is his national security advisor. He listens to his defense secretary, he listens to his secretary of state, and his national security advisor. But he'd be, he'd be, he'd be much better off with some of his domestic, if he, listened, if he had better domestic political advisors, and listen to what they told him. Okay. Yeah. And our next book, what is I think, I think that's what Nixon book? would tell him, too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and tell us, what is your next book that you, next you book have is, mentioned? Yeah, it's going to be a biography of Senator Ted Kennedy. Okay. And so having done Nixon, now I get to do a Kennedy. Kennedy. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to seeing that. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, uh, Literary Globe members. And my next book will be with Nicole Cross, and that's coming up uh, in two months' time, I believe. All right. Bye.